Namaskar, Nile Shok here. Tonight or any night in your lifetime, if you go outdoor at night with a clear sky, and if you can notice the Saptarshi constellation, you will able to identify the middle star of the handle or the tail, that's Vasishta. Next to that, a small star, that's Arundhati. And if you can also identify the, the pole star, which would be right here at the point of NCP. And if you follow the movement of Vasishta and Arundhati through the night, as long as you can see them up in the sky, you will notice that Vasishta is walking ahead of Arundhati. This is the cycle of, or the circle rather, of NCP that takes 26,000 years for this point of NCP to go around and complete one circle and let's say come back to where the pole star is today okay so from our times going back 26000 years or going forward 26000 years we would have a identical scenario all right so let's see how the scene would look like i'm going to remove the ncp circle now this is where our current pole star is this is the position of Vasishta. This is the position of Arundhati. If your eyesight is not very good and the sky conditions are not favorable, you may want to use a binocular or a, a small telescope. Any telescope would do. A binocular would also do. And you can observe Vasishta and Arundhati. Now, all these circles, all these arrows are for the benefit of those who are not very good with visual observations, observations of um, astronomy objects, but also not very conversant or good in understanding angular moment, angular motion, or in general geometrical figures, okay? It's for the benefit of them because in reality, none of these circles or even these arrows exist in the sky, nor there is a specific point in CP. This is to help us. And keep in mind, not everyone is capable of understanding this and not everyone necessarily has the required background knowledge to understand this. So this is for the benefit of those who are willing to put some efforts, okay, in understanding how to observe astronomy objects through the night. And so let's begin. NCP is where the current pole star is, Polaris right here, so to say. And with respect to that NCP, if you look at the Vasishta and Arundhati, they would look like this. And if I animate it, they are going to look like this. What you will find is that Vasishta is walking ahead, Arundhati is walking behind, okay? They are going, the, although they look like here, you know, actually the motion is correct, the anti-clockwise, but you know, you have to get used to this anti-clockwise motion in the astronomy world, okay? The visual astronomy world. What you're going to see if you're facing the North Pole star, you will see Arundhati Vasishta along with the Saptarshi appear somewhere in the northeast part of the sky. They come above your head, going in the anti-clockwise direction. Remember, you're facing the North Pole star and go around. So a possible scenario that you will see, let's see if I can mimic that, would look something like this. 
Okay, so this horizontal line here, we will imagine to be say horizon. So now let's say they are coming above the horizon, okay? So that's how it will look like. This is like, imagine this to be your northeast direction. From there, you will see come up, 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 up in the sky. And in anti-clockwise direction, you are facing the North Pole. And they are going to go down. Okay, depending on your latitude, of course. At some places, they will go down. Other places, they will not go down. For most of the places, almost all the places in India, at some point, they will go down. Okay, below the horizon. Okay, so that's how you're going to look at it. That's the scenario uh, right now. Now, what is uh, interesting, let me bring the NCP circle again. Is if we go back in time. Okay, so let me stop it here. So this is 2023, okay? If we go back in time, let's say to something like 3000 BC, okay? You're going to see the same picture again. So now the pole star moved from Polaris. We went back in time by about 5,000 years to 3000 BC and the pole star at that time was Thuban, okay? that So imagine the NCP now at Thuban and if you look at the moment of Vasishta and Arundhati, they would appear like this. Okay, Vasishta would be ahead, Arundhati behind, and the position of NCP near the star Thuban, because Thuban was the pole star about 5,000 years ago in around 3,000 BC. Next thing we are going to do is go back to a specific year, 46. 36 BCE. Okay. And what's the reason for it? Well, this point Q is the point where NCP, NCP was, why, why am I doing this? Okay, <laughs> sorry. Okay, the point Q is where NCP was. Let me just coincide it perfectly here. In the year 4636 BCE. Now there was no specific distinct visible star, at least visible to the naked eyes. You can always identify a star that you will able to see through telescope or binocular, but not something that you could easily see with the naked eye. But that's the point of NCP. So when there is no distinct pole star or distinct star that can act as a pole star, what's going to happen is there is like a blank spot you can say in the sky around which you will see all the stars revolve, including Arundhati and Vasishta. But geometrically, something very peculiar happen, happened in 4636 BCE. What is that? It so happens that suppose you draw a line, okay, through going through Vasishta, Arundhati, and if you extend that line uh, such that it cuts the NCP circle, then it cuts it at these two points. At least that's what happened in the last cycle of the procession. It cut at 4636 BC and then again going back in past at 10,248 BC, that's this point P. And because they are on the same, all the three points, this point of NCP in the year 4636 BC, along with star Arundhati, star Vasishta are along the same line. Guess what? 
If I remove this, this is what you're going to see. Okay. Arundhati and Vashishta will walk together. No one is going to be ahead of the other star. This situation is going to happen in 4636 BC. You will also see that we can replicate this situation if we if we take it to 40 sorry 10248 okay so let's say this is perfect now okay that's another time when you will see they are going together no one ahead no one behind these are the upper and lower limits for the epoch of Arundhati, 10,248 BCE and 4636 BCE. These are the refined numbers, refined limits due to good work of Sri Siddhartha Chabra. Based on the refined data that he made use of that was available in the year 2019, about 10 years before that, when I finally demystified the mystery of this revolutionary Arundhati Vashishta observation from the Mahabharata text, Yachaisha Visutta Rajas Trailokke Sadhu Sammata Arundhati Taya Pesha Vashishta Prashtata Krita. The observation was known to all Mahabharata researchers. Unfortunately, or as it happened, uh, nobody until 2009, I finally solved it. Nobody could solve the mystery behind it. Some, maybe four, five, four to five Mahabharata researchers referred to this observation because they understood the importance of it. But they also expressed their frailty okay, in their ability to explain it which is to say they could not explain it. On the other hand, I would say majority of the Mahabharata dating researchers simply acted as if this observation did not exist because they were in the business of cherry picking. They were only using few observations to justify the date that they already had in their mind. So, Finally, when I demystified it in 2009, this has become a real pain point <laughs> for these Mahabharata dating researchers. Okay, Be why is it a pain point? Because this single observation decisively falsifies any claim for the year of Mahabharata war that is after 4636 BCE, which is what? Practically 99% of all alternate claims for the year of Mahabharata war. Anything that is claimed after 4636 BCE, in a simple language, anything that is claimed in the last 6,500 years. Now I want to show you this epoch of Arundhati, which is bound by these two years, 4636 BCE and 10,248 BCE. So let me bring the NCP circle back here. This is the point of 4636 BCE. This is the point of 10,248 BCE, okay, in the last cycle of precession. Our current point of NCP is right here at Polaris. Okay, so now what happens is anywhere along this portion from Q to P, okay, you can call this arc, okay, so if I give, I can call this right now, arc Q NCP P, but since NCP keeps on moving, I can give a name here in between to certain point. In fact, we can take the point of say Ma Mahabharat 5561 BCE here and call it MB, okay? Or M for Mahabharat, okay? And what happens is, Anytime the point of NCP is along this portion of the arc of this NCP circle, you're always going to find Arundhati would be seen walking ahead of Vasishta. 
which is what Vasudev has noted down at the time of Mahabharat War. So what does it tell us? If that's the case, let's see that first. Okay. Um, here. Okay. So now you see Arundhati is ahead and Vasishta is behind. Uh, it may be useful. Maybe. Okay. Just if you draw the circle, the Arundhati circle and Vasishta circle. So it's kind of easy to see who is ahead, who is behind. Okay. Uh, but what it means is that since Vasudev is saying Arundhati is walking ahead of Vasishta at the time of Mahabharat war, and all we can show, which is amazing by the way, that the Arundhati was walking ahead of Vasishta only during this time interval between 10,248 BC, that is to say after 10,248 BC and before 4,636 BC. Anywhere along this portion, okay, between P and Q on this side, Arundhati will always be ahead, okay? It doesn't matter where. I mean, I can select a different point like this and show it to you. Okay, and if it helps, I will draw this circle, okay, so you can see that. But in this 5,000 year interval, the Mahabharat war could have happened anywhere. So how do we narrow it down? Well, fortunately, we have tons of other evidence and astronomy evidence, just like Arundhati Vasishta evidence in the Mahabharata text. 300 plus, super rich. If you just start with the Bhishma Nirvana evidence, it also validates this epoch of Arundhati, that time interval. Actually, it makes it even tighter. And then if you look at the planetary evidence, which is again super rich, about 50 plus uh, specific descriptions of a planet, of planets rather, Graha, all the visible planets, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Sun, and Moon. They all fall like a pieces of jigsaw puzzle, all the clues, unintelligible clues from the Mahabharata, astronomy clues, bring it all together for a very specific year, 55, 61 BC. Okay, so for example, so therefore we can just say, okay, so where would that 55, 61 BC would be? See, this is 10,248 BC. This is 46, 36 BC. So approximately, we can say, say something like this, for example, okay, 55, 61 BC. And how it would have looked in 55, 61 BC, let's just do this. Okay, those of you, you can see which direction they are moving anti-clockwise. Arundhati is ahead, Vasishta is behind. Now those dotted lines from NCP help you see that easily. Okay, if you draw these circle for each of the Arundhati Vasishta, it may help you. But remember, actually, when you are making astronomy observation, it is very important that you learn the basics. And depending on your background, depending on your interest, depending on your intellect, it can take you anywhere from, say, one year to 10 years to 20 years. Who knows? Maybe some people will never able to attain the basic expertise required to see this in the sky or understand the simulations like this. Okay? But... In 5561 BC, again, Arundhati was indeed walking ahead of Vasishta. An additional 300 plus astronomy observations when tested in a very similar fashion. Of course, depending on the observation, the, the kind of experiment we have to design would change. But all of them, in a very consistent fashion, take you to the year 5561 BC. So this is how... Vasudev observed Arundhati walking ahead of Vasishta in the year 5561 BC at the time of Mahabharata war. And he noted it down as a timestamp. Astronomy is time as far as the Indian civilization, the Hindu civilization is concerned. And along with Arundhati Vasishta observation, he noted down many observations. Again, this is not a, a singular phenomenon. If you go to Valmiki Ramayana, Maharshi Valmiki has done the same. He has noted down close to 600 
astronomy observation observations and they also bring you together for a very specific year for the year of ram ravan yuddha okay but that's a different subject so that's it guys okay it's that simple and let me stop the simulation this is how the scenario was in 5561 BC. And just for bringing us back to where we are, actually we are coming forward in time. So think of this as this point here, which is our point of NCP or point of NCP in our times, okay? So if you come here, guess what? You're going to see now what's just a walk ahead. This is what you're going to see it in our lifetimes. That's how the scenario is in our lifetimes. All right, thanks for watching. I'll stop sharing.